Hi, this is Daniel with iRevive Spray. In this video, we are going to be showing you how to fix a water damaged HTC Evo 4G. First thing is remove the back cover and then take out the battery. Press on the battery and it should be hard. Um, if it's you can feel a bubble in it or if it's soft and kind of squishy, you're going to need to replace your battery. They commonly go out whenever they get water damaged. Using a Torx T5 screwdriver, remove the six screws around the edge of the phone. Notice that on the left side, the screw in the middle right there normally has black tape over it. You can see it right there. Um, you can either use something to scratch it off or normally just push your screwdriver down onto it. Um, it is going to show tamper proof. Note that doing this is going to avoid any warranty that you may have had. Next up, we're going to use one of the green plastic pry tools, and we're prying in between the white and the black, and there's actually a series of um, clips that you have to undo. Um, as you can see, you work around, and then you finally get the clip, and it pops apart, and there's, one, there's four you know, on each corner of the phone. Carefully set aside the red and white back piece of the phone, and now grab your Phillips screwdriver, and we have to take out a screw that's in the top right corner. Once you've done this, now rotate it around and we can take off these three pieces of black tape which are covering some of the flex cable connectors. Once you have all these off, you can then remove the black piece with the IMEI numbers and it's the sticker right there. In this video I lifted out the logic board first before doing that. It simply just peels off. Once you've done that, flip up the black bars on all three flex cable connectors. Notice the one in the middle is on the bottom side and the two on the outsides, the connectors on the top. Then using a screwdriver you can see how you gently pull out the flex cables and once you've done that you can lift the whole logic board out. As you can see right there, you can see the water damage indicator has been tripped on this phone. Now this next part can be kind of tricky. Using your flat screwdriver, you're going to want to take the corner of the screwdriver and lift, put it right underneath the corner of the plate on the logic board. These are just heat plates trying to keep all the chips safe away from dust and everything. Whenever you're doing this, be very careful not to knock or be prying on any of the other little transistors or anything else you see on the board. Um, if you can see in the video, I'm normally going in at the corner where there's nothing else on the board that you could potentially damage and always lifting straight up gently. Um, like I said, the easiest way is use the corner of the screwdriver to catch the corner of the plates. And then once you do that, they pop off pretty easily. Next, we're basically going to do the same thing with the back camera. First, you have to remove uh, the frame that's actually holding the camera down. Uh, same thing, get in the corners, and this time you're probably going to have to go to each of the four corners and lift up uh, and just work that frame off, and then we can pull the camera out. Note, whenever you pull it out, which direction it's going. See those numbers are facing to the left. Place the camera so that whenever you put it back in, you'll know um, the same way it goes. Now, using iRevive Spray, you're going to want to generously spray the entire board. And the, that's the reason that we actually had to remove all those heat plates was so that we can get the spray on there. And what this is doing is it is removing any corrosion that could have formed whenever water damage happened. And you know, typically they say just let your phone dry out and it'll be fine. But what you don't know is all the other um, salts and everything in the water, whenever that comes into your phone and then evaporates, all those salts are left behind and then they start to corrode. So this is why we spray it with iRevive and now we're brushing it to remove any of the corrosion and the iRevive will also help displace any water that may still be remaining in the foam. Um, as you saw in the very first part you want to be scrubbing very gently um, especially targeting any areas where you see corrosion and what corrosion looks like is instead of um, you know seeing the silver or gold of the metal you're gonna see a white almost powdery buildup it'll also be green sometimes so if you see any white or green powder, you are going to want to, you know, if you need to spray some more iRevive on there, you can do that and then gently scrub it off. You are going to want to work your way across the entire board. Even if you can't see any corrosion, 
there could still be very, very small amounts there. Um, and all it takes is enough corrosion to bridge a gap between two of the transistors or two of the little pins on one of the chips. And that could be causing the reason of why your phone isn't going to work. Now once you feel pretty confident that you've gotten all the corrosion off the front side of the board, go ahead and flip it over and inspect it looking for any of that white or green. See right here, that is the proximity sensor, light sensor. It's very sensitive. You're not going to want to spray any of the iRevive on there or scrub it. Um, that sensor can be damaged pretty easily. Now that we have all of the corrosion removed from the board, we're going to need to let it dry. Typically, let it set out for 1 to 24 hours. Um, if you want to speed up the process, you can use a blow dryer, but make sure that you use it on the cool setting. Um, and you can blow dry the board for 5 to 10 minutes, uh, speeds up the process. The iRevive does evaporate fairly quickly, but you want to make sure that you get all of it off. Um, also, the other components of the board, such as the red and white back housing, um, if there was any water left in that, having that out, just sitting out, um, you want to make sure there's no water left anywhere within the phone. As you can see, we're now simply um, reassembling the board, uh, snapping the plates back on. Uh, we did the camera, and we're basically just going to put everything back together now uh, in the same order. Remember that all three of the tabs on the flex cable connectors need to be flipped up to put the flex cable back in. Uh, typically, you'll flip them down whenever you're cleaning them or brushing with the iRevive. Uh, as you can see, you can slide it in, and each tab actually has two little tabs on the sides which help you push it in further. Um, and so what you'll see here in a second is once it gets started and it's in the right slot, then I'm going to use the flat screwdriver to push up either side of the tab to get it in all the way. And once you do get it in, you're going to want to go ahead and fold over the black um, bar to lock the flex cable in place. Here you can see we got started, popped out again. Just want to get started and then using the flat screwdriver, poke it up in place and then snap down to lock it in. Now we're going to fit the board down into the phone. It may take a little bit of wiggling to get that top corner to align right, but once you do, you're going to want to then reinsert the Phillips screw in the top right corner and make sure you put this screw into the right hole. Um, the left hole is the one that that um, T5 Torx screw goes into with the red frame. So make sure you put that Phillips one into the right side, otherwise you won't be able to put the um, screw in there. And I made a mistake right here, forgot to put on that. It doesn't really serve any um, functional purpose, but cosmetically and it just you know looks good. Make sure that you don't place it over too far to the right where you're gonna cover either one of those gold tabs because those do need to connect up to that um, red backing. And work your way all the way around the phone. All those tabs just snap into place, and then we're going to reinsert the six torque screws again. You can order iRevive at iRevivespray.com. We do have overnight shipping available if you need it in a hurry. Also, iRevive can be used on any PCB, which means printed circuit board. Basically, printed circuit boards are what power all of the mobile electronic devices such as phones, laptops, um, tablets. So if you are able to take apart the device yourself, feel free to use iRevive on any device that may have gotten water damage. Um, we are constantly trying to come out with new instructions, so stay tuned. As you can see, simply reassemble your phone and turn it back on.